Welcome campers. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to remove your MP231 transfer case and how to install the advanced adapter slip yoke eliminator. Stay tuned. <music> Before you guys get started on anything, chalk the wheels of the vehicle. I don't want anyone removing their rear drive shaft and the vehicle rolling over them and crushing them. So safety is first with this. After chalking the tires of the vehicle, the second thing I did was removed the transmission fluid from the transfer case. And then after that, I removed the front and rear drive shaft on it. Then my plan from there was to remove the bolts for the transmission mount and then put a jack underneath the transmission plant pan with a block of wood to hold it all in place while I wrench on the transfer case. Then once you remove the cross member, you're gonna wanna undo the breather hose and all of the electrical plugins and connections that are on the transfer case itself. So after removing your cross member, the next step would be to remove your transmission mount and then your exhaust mount and then that should give you access to all six of the bolts that's holding the transfer case to the transmission. And the bolts that hold up your cross member are a 17 millimeter. So that right there I learned is about one of the easiest ways to remove that exhaust hanger. Also these uh, ratcheting wrenches will be a lifesaver. And the bolts holding the transfer case to the transmission are a 14 millimeter and there's six of them. So there's a bolt on the bottom down here and then a bolt on the side and a bolt on the very top that if you have your exhaust fully bolted in it is impossible to uh to reach those bolts so what i did was i just dropped the exhaust onto the ground and uh from there i'm just gonna leave it on the ground so i can get to these three bolts on the side so yeah i highly suggest the uh the ratcheting in wrenches and uh dropping the exhaust down it uh it makes reaching these bolts just night and day difference it, it would take you hours to remove the bolts without dropping the exhaust all right boys and girls i got the transfer case off of the transmission it will it won't just fall onto you because the studs on the transfer case are holding it in the holes of the transmission and the output shaft is in the transfer case so you don't have to worry about just once you remove the last bolt having it fall onto you but uh yeah it is out i got it resting there it should be uh draining out any residual atf perfect this is where we're at so far got the t-case removed and uh it is filthy so uh before i fully get started i'm gonna give this thing a bath in the morning then split the case and get started on the slip yoke after getting kicked out of my local car wash uh the transfer case is now clean so uh now let's get started on removing the uh old tail housing and uh cracking the case apart all right so after you get the uh dust shield and the strap that holds that on off you're gonna have this ring on here you're gonna to wanna to remove. And then there's your first lock ring that you're gonna to wanna to take your lock, your lock ring pliers to remove. And then this dust shield should be able to come off. And in the description of the video, I will put these lock ring pliers in there. Um, 
so it'll make your life a lot easier. I'll put the lock ring pliers and the snap ring pliers in the description. So what I learned, uh, after you get the oil seal out, you're gonna have your first or your second large snap ring. Um, if you could see in there, maybe. Uh, I'm slowly getting it out of the channel that locks it in there. But it's at the point now where it's gonna like shoot out of the top like a rocket. So I'm gonna put like a rag or something over it to help catch it so I don't get smashed in the face with a snap ring or it flies off and breaks something. If you haven't done any work to your transfer case and this is like the original setup and this yoke's never been removed, um, I'll take your longest Harbor Freight breaker bar and an inch and an eighth socket will fit that nut. Either cover it with PB blaster or just get it as hot as possible with like a blowtorch and uh, just uh, jam your block of wood in here before, uh, against the edge of the yoke and the part of the T case right here. And it'll hold it in place perfect for you to uh, loosen that nut. All right, you guys, once uh, you get the yoke off the bottom, uh, remove the speedometer gear housing. But make sure however it's oriented, so like mine, the little tooth to hold the plug on is facing the shaft. Just make sure that you put it away like that because you're gonna have to reinstall it the exact same way. Okay, so once you get to the point where all of the five 10 millimeter bolts are removed from the tail housing, there's two points to pry on right here. Well, three actually, right here, right here, and on the back side, there's a third one. But before you fully remove the tail housing, there will be a snap ring it's it was way down here that was holding the tail housing onto the shaft itself what i did to help make assembly easier of the two case halves is there is one 12 point black bolt on the entire side of the case halves so where that black 12 point bolt is i just did a line and wrote a b so you know that's where the black bolt is and then that's where the two case halves come together and the wrench I'm using is a 10 millimeter, just cause I don't have a 12 point socket. But the rest of the bolts are 15 millimeter. So you just uh, 10 millimeter and then 15 for the rest of them. So once I have the two case halves cracked apart, I took the O-ring off of the uh, fluid tube and stuck it back into there just to make it easier. And then I would suggest to clean the filter and the magnet that's in the bottom of it just to get you know any of the particles or anything just to keep your transfer case as clean as possible at this point too the second you pull the case halves apart i would just take a picture of it just to see how everything goes just so when you reassemble it and if you forget it will make life a lot easier than trying to guess so that's what i'm going to do too is just take a picture of this so don't mind the fan noise in the background it's getting kind of warm in here but once you get the case half torn apart you just pull the top or each of the shafts out of there and then that you will have a snap ring that is retaining these gears onto the shaft that you are going to replace all right you guys once uh you get the shaft out of the transfer case and you have it all laid out this is how it should go should go this gear will go on top it should look just like this if you want to pause the video and uh make sure it's set up like that and then you take the new shaft you put it in there just like that and then from there you pull it onto there and make sure all the splines are lined up and this is how it should look Hopefully with, uh, mine's a, a mid 96, it's the cross year between the 96 and 97, but I have the old style, some of the old style stuff still. Uh, on the older 231 transfer cases, inside these gears, there's needle bearings. And uh, you're supposed to press those needle bearings out of, I think this gear, and it'll all line up just like how mine did. Luckily, mine being the cross year, and 97 and up doesn't have an issue with the needle bearings. 
But uh, I would take this time just to inspect your gears also, all the gears inside and the chain inside, make sure none's wrong. And then if you do want to clean it all up, this would be a good time to clean it all also. So what I ended up doing was uh, taking my gears and cleaning them with some brake cleaner just to make sure they looked all right and have them clean with, uh, from any debris or anything like that. Then this, uh, this output shaft, I did wipe that down. So uh, any dust, anything like that, I got it off. And then I did take the other shaft and the chain and I completely cleaned it with some brake cleaner and then wiped it down also just to make sure everything was uh, nice and clean and nothing wrong with it. And then with the larger part of the case, I am gonna wipe it down, just get any specks or any anything nasty out of it. And then I am gonna prepare the surface with a, a green scotch bright pad and brake cleaner just to make sure it's really clean for the uh, the black RTV I'm going to use. And then I will clean the other half of the, of the case housing too just to make sure it's a really good surface so I don't have to do this all over again with a leaky T case. Alright so once you get the gears onto the new shaft there is a single retainer ring the, the largest ring that comes with the advanced adapters kit, the thickest one, goes right here to hold these gears on. And then from there, more rings will go in these slots. All right, so after putting the lock ring, the gears to the new shaft, I put everything back in there, just how it came out. And I used a little bit of a trans fluid, the T-case fluid, to uh, get the chain wet and the gears wet since I cleaned everything with brake cleaner. Then now I am at the point where I put RTV around every single bolt and I slathered it around kind of like a, a cake batter. And then uh, it is time to assemble it. After about an hour, I am gonna torque all the bolts around the transfer case to the spec, whatever that is. Uh, I'll put that number on the screen right now. And then from there, I put on the uh, transfer case pump. But uh, I slid it on there and then I used a pick tool to get the tube back into the pump itself. And then from there, uh, I'm just waiting it out for that hour to, to torque this down. And then from there, I'll build up the everything that goes on this output shaft. And then I will RTV this and put on the new tail housing. So once I got all the lock rings and the speedometer gear locked onto the shaft, I put the RTV on the tail housing again. Spread it out like cake batter, pressed it on there, but I didn't press it on there until it smashed out. I just put it on there and then I tightened each of the five bolts until it slightly smashed out around the edges. And then from there you let it sit another hour and then torque it down to spec, which should be 25 pounds. All right, and while waiting the hour to let the RTV set up on the tail shaft housing, I am putting the yokes on. And with the yoke on the inside of the yoke, right before the splines, I'll show you with the, the other one. Right before the splines right here, put a bead of RTV in that and then press it onto the, the splines of the transfer case. And then at least with the Adams drive shaft and the advanced adapters kit, it came with a little star piece to fit along the splines. So you'll put the RTV on the inside and then you'll press it onto the splines and then from there this will go on the inside of that to kind of seal it and then from there you put the nut on there and you tighten it down to between 140 to 150 foot pounds. The last thing is putting your speedometer gear back in. So let's get that in right now and then from there I have one more thing I have to do, which is the whole reason why the transfer case leaked. So uh, I'll show you guys that and the parts for it. Everything is tight, everything is sealed, everything is torqued down, but this is the last thing on mine. This is the whole reason why my transfer case was leaking and got everything disgusting. It is the shift shaft seal. So if that is leaking on yours, this is where the linkage connects. I have the two parts to fix it and I'll tell you where I got them and the part numbers. So this is the first one. It is the O-ring. 
this o-ring goes underneath that white plastic piece that's the retainer that's the o-ring for it i got it at napa and i'll put the part number on the screen because it seemed like everywhere i called or went they did not have it other than napa auto parts so that is the o-ring and then this is the retainer ring it's just a little white plastic ring and I will put the well actually no that that is the part number right there for it and uh, I got this at 4 parts and honestly like each part was a dollar each so I mean it's extremely cheap and it's easy to replace um, I will put the socket on the screen that uh, is used after you re remove the retainer and the o-ring um, you put in the new o-ring and the new retainer and then you can use a socket to press down on it to get it all pressed in place and tight so it doesn't leak anymore all right so the easiest way to get out that retainer and the o-ring is just with a pick tool use uh, two pick tools to run along the side to get the retainer out and then I just used a pointy pick tool just to jab into the rubber o-ring to pull it out and it came out with no problem so what I'm gonna do now is take the new o-ring and just put a little bit of transmission fluid on it and then slide it in there and then uh, I will take the retainer and push it on top with that socket and uh, we should be golden awesome the uh, the shift shaft o-ring and seal are in there um, I did not find a socket that could fit it so what I did was use the uh, pick tool that I used as a little pry bar and I broke to push it in there to get it started and then I used the pointy pick tool just to press on top of it to get it smashed down in place and then uh, I just got it pushed in there as far as possible and that should be perfect but uh yeah that is everything you guys we uh, we got you know the slip yoke in with no issues we got all the rtv on there everything torqued down the yokes on there the speedometer back in there or the speedometer gear but yeah that is everything you guys um pretty much the way to get it back in the jeep is just the reverse of uh how you took it out but uh other than that guys uh i really appreciate you guys watching this was just a quick little video of me uh you know kind of documenting this during my slip yoke install and uh, i will show you guys the final product with the new adams rear drive shaft and the front drive shaft in and uh you guys have a good day thanks for watching and uh please like and subscribe and stay tuned for our future videos bye you guys